evening. Welcome to Freedom Baptist Church tonight. Let's take us a songbook, turn to hymn number 42, Saved by the Blood. Hymn number 42 if you need it. Sing it out on that first verse. Saved by the blood of the singing you may be seated pray for the choir as we sing
today when the Lord saves you. Just turn around, stand up, turn around, and greet somebody tonight. Tell them you're glad to see them in the Lord's house. The choir's going to come down and join you now. Amen. So good to see you in God's house uh, this evening. And uh, thank you so much for being here. And good to have several folks visiting with us today. Autumn's got her friends with her. Uh, Joe Ellen and her mom Ellie are with us. So we thank you for coming. And just good to be in God's house tonight. Looking forward to it. Hope you had a good day. And uh, good to have the Bach family with us. It's been several years, probably 2020 since they've been here. And uh, we're glad they're back. And uh, thank the Lord for them and their family. They're going to be singing for us, but the Bach will be speaking. And so you pray for them. And it's just good to be in God's house tonight. Thank the Lord for it. Hope you had a good day today. And uh, boy, just wake up and think, this is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and be glad in it. He made it for you and me. Praise the Lord. And he didn't, have to, he didn't even let, have to let us share in his day. Did you know that? He could have created it for himself. But he lets us enjoy it. I mean, you, you can see whatever you want to see, and you've never seen anything like God's handiwork. And he lets us see it every He shares it with us, and we don't deserve it. Brother Bach, if you'd be coming on in, coming on up, rather, and, um, and uh, kids, y'all come on up. Thank you for being here. And uh, I was talking to him the other day, and he said, we lost a wheel today. I said, lost a wheel one of the trailer wheels flew off going down the highway. I tell you, you can have more fun by accident with the Lord than you can on purpose for the devil. I can tell you that. And they made it. Amen. And we're glad they're here. And Brother Brock, we're glad you're here. So you, you sing, preach, whatever y'all want to do. And uh, that'll be a blessing. My sheep know my voice and the path that I take. They follow wherever I my sheep know my voice and come at my call, but a stranger's voice they do not know. My sheep know my voice and day by day they abide.
We're just delighted to be with you. Appreciate your pastor, appreciate Freedom Baptist Church and your involvement in our ministry and our family and uh, the Lord's working in our midst. And I can see he's certainly working here. And um, I see a lot more faces, preacher, than last time we were by. And that's a real blessing. See what God's doing. God's still working. And so we rejoice with you at what God's doing here and ask that you continue to pray for us in our ministry and our outreach. You know, we're involved in aviation and we reach out and we try to focus on people no one else is really targeting or focusing. And we try to get God's will on where to go and to whom to go. And that's what we're all about. And just trying to win people to Christ because the Lord's coming back. And we, uh, we believe that. We really believe that. And we don't know. It could come before... I'm done preaching. We don't know, but we know it's closer today than it's ever been. And so that's one thing we do know. And so we should live every day as if the Lord's coming. Every day. Okay, so if you will, take your Bible and uh, we certainly appreciate you all. Appreciate your prayers. Appreciate your support. Uh, appreciate an offering from a church this size, preacher. What a blessing. I'll tell you what. Uh, I don't preach in churches this big very often. Our churches that we preach in usually are little churches. And so um, I'm humbled and appreciate the opportunity, preacher, to allow me to have this opportunity. 
So today we're looking and we're going to begin in Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. I was saved in 1980 and I thank the Lord for his salvation and the change that the Lord has brought. And it's all because of Jesus. I have a family and they know the Lord because I wasn't raised with uh, the Lord. And I knew the Ten Commandments, but I didn't know the Lord. And so I thank the Lord for my salvation. And today, if you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the only one who can change your life. And he gives us eternal life. That is a free gift. And all we have to do is receive him. And he gives us this free gift of eternal life. Now, this evening in Hebrews chapter 9, we're going to take our text there. I don't normally take a text without a context, but we're going to do that this evening to bring forward a topic that we want to look at. Let's begin with prayer, all right? Father, we thank you for this day. I pray that you bless this time. And Lord, I pray that your will be done and you'd help me this evening to be a blessing. Lord, that you'd speak through me or nothing can be accomplished. Lord, we just commit this time to you and pray in Jesus name. Amen. Hebrews 9 verse 27, very familiar verse says, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. I want to look at our little problem. You know, we have a little problem. We all have it. When you're young, it doesn't appear that we really have that problem, but the truth of the matter is we all die. And that is a problem. It says, it is appointed unto men once to die. And so we die. And we're all going to stand before God. And the question is, what are we going to do with our life? We only have this journey one time. We get to go through life one time. And on this journey, we have choices. We can choose whether we're going to receive the Lord Jesus Christ or not. We can choose whether we're going to invest our life in ourself or seek the Lord. And so it's amazing at the peak of life when people are most mature, most knowledgeable, when um, they've accumulated all the information that they can accumulate and have all the experience to share. And they get to that prime place where you think, wow, this person, how God can use them. And then what happens? Just like any fruit that's mature, the Lord picks it. And if we're saved, he takes us to heaven. And so... It's appointed unto men once to die. Do we really believe in a judgment? We're watching as we're seeing the number of missionaries going into the foreign fields depleting. I just heard on this trip that one missionary agency had no applicants this year. A lot of missionaries are retiring. I just talked to another preacher and he told me they support 140 missionaries. I said, how many are retiring? He said, quite a number. How many are replacing them? I talked to another preacher and he said, I'm glad you stopped by because we don't get that many calls anymore from missionaries. Now you may get a lot here, but across the board, it's not true everywhere we go. And so something's missing. You know what I believe it is? A vision. A vision. A vision for the judgment seat of Christ. A vision for the value of serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we need to be careful to run the race well. There was a couple that passed on December 7th, 2022. This was Hubert and June Malakot. They're from Dayton, Ohio. They were married for many years. I believe it was 72 years. They were both 100 years old. They loved each other so much 
that even at 100, they went to a pizza party and, and June had something happen and she wound up in a convalescent home and within 24 hours, her husband was in that same home. They said his heart was broken and they died within one hour of each other. But they lived all those years, but they couldn't live those years forever on this earth. They died. You know, we can live as if there is no tomorrow. And as if the Lord has given us eternity on this earth. But the truth of the matter is, we only have today. And we don't even know that we'll finish this day. And so... We need to stop and think about these things and consider it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. When you read in the book of Ecclesiastes, if you will just turn over there just for a little while, we read about this man named Solomon. The Lord told Solomon, he said, don't, we find in the book of Deuteronomy and then later on, God said, don't multiply horses, wives, or silver and gold. You know what he did? Solomon's known for his horse stables. You can go to the Holy Land and you can actually visit some of the stables that belong to Solomon. He drank from a golden cup. He sat on an ivory throne. And he had the most ornate throne that was known in the known world at that time. He had it all. He, um, his wives turned his heart away from God. And he writes this book called Ecclesiastes, probably written in his older years. You know what he says about life? Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. You know what he's saying? It sounds to me like he's saying, I messed up. I gave my life to the material world and I didn't give it completely to the Lord. You know, you have some flowers and they raise their, their petals up to the sun. And then you have some flowers and they kind of dip down to the earth. They're both beautiful. But the question is today, what kind of people are we going to be if you compare us to flowers? Are we going to be looking to the Lord by faith or looking to this world? And so, in the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon talks about three circuits. He talks about the circuit of the sun, the wind, and the rivers that wind up in the ocean. And he talks about the subject of death. And uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, it says... One generation passeth away and another generation cometh. Now, I want you to think about this just for a moment. We have generations coming and going, and here we are. If you count the earth to be 6,000 years old since creation, and you look at a generation as 100 years. We could put it at different time frames, but let's just say 100 years. That means there have been 60 generations almost. And so in that time frame, the sun has, or the earth has circumvented the sun and the rivers have gone, come and gone numerous times. The wind has made its circuit around the earth numerous times and it's gone on and on and on. But each generation has come and passed while creation's motion has continued. And it shows you that we're just creatures of time. And it's brief. They say in every older person, there's a, still a child and a young man and a middle-aged person is still in the bosom of that person. But I don't know about you, but to me, the older I get, the faster time seems to go. And the more I see the importance of trying to make 
much of life. And so we find Solomon, he talks about certain pursuits in life. And he mentions in verse number eight, all things are full of labor, man cannot under it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing nor the ear filled with hearing. You know what he's saying? Life's get going by, but I just can't find total satisfaction. And so when it comes to satisfaction, either Jesus told the truth and it's in him, or we're to go pursue it some other way. And so I have found I'm much happier now with the Lord Jesus than I ever was before I met the Lord. With all of its problems and all of the challenges and you know we had our wheel fall off on this trip. We were going down the road and on our trailer my son's driving. I said boys I want you to change the wheels over and and put the front wheel of the trailer in the back and the back one in the front and save the tread you know and make it run a little farther because we have an axle a little bit bent, and I, it's okay. It's just wearing tires a little quicker on the one side. And uh, Mark's driving down the road, and all of a sudden, the trailer starts shaking a little bit. Somebody's beeping the horn and pointing at us, and we pulled over. And, Here, we lost a wheel. And I, you know, like a, any happy father would do, I walk back, why in the world didn't you guys tighten those lug nuts? Now, when you have a big family, you can have all kinds of interesting things. Even if you have a small family, it doesn't matter. You can have all kinds. Of... Well, we, we have our share of challenges. And I'm sure you do too. But with all the challenges in life, if we're saved, way better. And if we're serving Jesus, pull out the stops, young people. Give your life. It's worth it. It's worth it. And so, Solomon, he talks about all the different pursuits of life. And he talks about nothing satisfies, not new things in verse 10. Knowledge, the pursuit of architecture. Some people, I like architecture. I, I love to look at the beauty of buildings. This is a beautiful building. I like to look at bridges and railroad tracks and their, their trestles and, and all these different things. But nothing satisfies like Jesus. No one satisfies like Jesus. Not attainments. Solomon said he came to great estate. Not wisdom, not experience, entertainments, any of it, these acquirements of wisdom and knowledge. Look at verse number 18. It says, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Pastor John Reichard said, I'm not as dumb as a lot of people think and not as smart as I think. The attainment of knowledge. Boy, we have that, don't we? Google, what's my name? You know. I, I've never asked Google that one. But I'll tell you what, we need to realize it's appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And so, most people's vision doesn't reach beyond their home, which is a temporary dwelling. Their family, which is a finite relationship. Their job, which is a terminal stewardship. And their bank account, which can be a false security. Discipleship puts all of this in perspective. 
And so the main appeal this evening is, are there any more missionaries to fill the gaps? Are there any more young people willing to give their life? Have you ever traveled around Portland, Oregon, or Seattle, Washington? You know where all the young people are? Well, you go there, you're going to find out something. They're on every imaginable drug. They're living in the worst case scenario. Their lives are wasting away. Many are dying. You know what this represents? America's missionaries of yesteryear. After the Second War, there was a missionary by the name of Brother Boffman. You ever heard of Brother Boffman? He was with BIMI. He did a survey. And he said after the Second War, there were no less than 60,000. This would be people that could share the gospel with someone and they could be saved. 60,000 missionaries that went out to the four flung corners of the world. Now, about 15 years ago, he did another survey and he said he checked all the colleges where someone could know and be able to share the gospel. And he said there were, the, there were only 6,000 that were even considering it. That's 15 years ago. Today, I don't know what it is. But we're seeing a great reduction. And so Solomon, he talks about the pursuit of all these things. Pleasure, entertainment, drinking, enterprise, authority. Look at verse 7 of chapter 2. I got me servants, maidens, and had servants born in my house. And also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. He said, I had it all. But you know what he says all through this book? Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. You know what he's saying? I missed it. I missed it. Now, I'm not saying that everybody that, that's, uh, you know, everybody has to be a missionary. I'm not saying that. Or everybody has to be a preacher. But I'm saying if you have a choice and God speaks to you, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. It's the greatest life serving Jesus. It's the greatest life. Seeing God do things that only he can do. And watching him work in ways that we'll never know unless we give our life and serve him. When you read in the book of Matthew, the Lord said, consider the lilies. And he said, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. You know what he's saying? Solomon put it all on himself. But God wants to put whatever it is on us himself. Don't miss it. It's not too late. The rapture has not happened yet. But after the trumpet, there'll be no more chance. There'll be no more opportunity to serve Jesus as we did down here. You see, the stewardship of life only goes for the Christian until they die or the rapture. Do you realize that the rapture is God's way of ending the stewardship of this age? Is that good? Well, it is, you know, because we look for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, it's wonderful. But if you want to earn a crown, time's over for that. And so Solomon says in chapter two, one event 
happeneth to them all. The big event. I'm not looking forward to that one. The big event. Dying. Not looking forward to it. I don't know why, but I just don't. I believe in God, but I don't. I don't really want to die. I want the Lord to come first. I really do. And so, in light of our impending expiration date, we have an expiration date. Your ticker only lasts so long. My brother can hear his. He got a mechanical valve. He's keeping him up at night sometimes. He can hear that tick, 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 tick. But we have an expiration date. It's appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And so we see, in light of brevity, the wisdom of following Jesus. And so Solomon said, chapter 2, verse 17, all is vanity. All is vanity. In verse 18, he said, I hated all my labor which I have taken under the sun because I should leave it unto the man that should be after me. You can't take it with you when you go. There's no U-Hauls following the hearse. And so we've got to leave it. Others will benefit from our labor. And so we've got to leave this world. There's a lot of songs written about that. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My home is laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And so we need to be ready. That rich man, he said, I'm going to build me some bigger barns. The Lord said, no, you're not. Your expiration date's coming up now. And so today, if you're not saved, you better listen. If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't do it. The Lord's calling us to salvation But you know when it says today, if you hear his voice, salvation is an application. But in context, it's about giving your life to the Lord. And so, if you've already done that, praise the Lord. You know, part of going to church is giving your life to the Lord. It's a calling. And it's no less important than any other of the callings that God has if we are faithful to our stewardship. And so, Jesus said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And so the wisest course is finding what God wants us to do and the gift that God has invested in all of us if we're saved. And employing our gift and serving the Lord. I'm the least likely candidate for this job. I know that. Every day I live is borrowed. I know that. I don't deserve anything the Lord's done. I know that. But I sure am thankful. And so we need to serve the Lord Jesus. Solomon, at the end of his life, said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole map. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You know, Jesus gave some commandments. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Do you realize there's places that are remaining 
empty of preachers. Because somebody's not listening. And so we need to listen. And so the challenge is for these young people. If God reveals to you a call, I'm trying to encourage you, go ahead, pull out the stops, follow Jesus to the end of the world, do whatever he says, and your life will be meaningful. You won't be saying at the end of your life, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. And so, these young people, I, I'm encouraged to see God speaking to them. He, he's speaking to their hearts. These young boys in, in our family. I feel as a parent, my job is to try to convince them of the wisest course. I'm not twisting their arm. I'm just trying to convince them. Listen to God. If he reveals something to you, don't be afraid. Just do it. And God will bless you. And so, and I know you folks are doing God's will. You're in church tonight. But there may be someone here, you, you've never been saved. And so this evening, you could be saved. You could come to Jesus. You've heard the gospel. Most likely, you've heard it. Are you rapture ready? Do you remember the days everybody was talking about the coming of the Lord? Jesus is coming. Are you ready? You see signs everywhere. What well, Jesus talked about in the time you think not. The Son of Man cometh. Everything's in order. We don't need all those things in place, but I don't see any more puzzle pieces that need, I mean, for the tribulation even. I mean, it's like the tribulations, well, the rapture's got to fit in there somewhere. Amen. So we need to be ready. And so thank you, Freedom Baptist Church, for your involvement in our life. And uh, we value your prayers. These are, these are days when the devil knows his time's getting less and he's fighting hard. But thanks be to God, we have the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, preacher, what the Lord gave me. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Brother Bach, for that message. Boy, I needed that. Oh, just a sober reminder. Everybody has a day of birth, we're going to have a day of death. In between those two, you need to have a day of salvation, a day of surrender. Uh, I hope you do. Uh, there's more coming off the field. That, that's been happening for a long time, more coming off and going on. But it's worse now than it's ever been. And, and I do not believe for a minute that God is calling any less people than he has. I don't believe that. You'll not convince me that God has quit calling people to the mission field. What, I, what has happened is we've quit listening and just expect to go on through life and God's going to bless me anyway. Not true. You cannot live disobedient to the will of God and get by. Oh, you know, I, oh, okay. It won't happen that way. It's a lot better. Just to surrender. And do the will of God. The best life is his will for your life. I guarantee it. And um, Brother Josh, I tell you what. You pray after they get done singing. Y'all come on up and sing that song. I want to hear it. And um, I just really want to hear it. Like a ship sailing out On a trip so rough and long so far from shore, so far from home, I set out in search of a reason to go on, and there I found it in the eye of the storm. No matter what storm clouds may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. Though my ship may be rocking and my sails 
Lead me toward I shall rest in the eye of the storm. When the wind and water rages and the billows begin to roll, the blessed rock of ages speaks peace to my soul. He holds me in his arms, so safe and so warm, and I find shelter in the eye of the storm. No matter what storm clouds may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. Though my ship may be rocking and my sails may be torn, I shall rest in the eye of the storm. I shall rest in the eye of the storm. Amen. Amen.